Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1991 Toyota Previa. Under me is a 2.4 liter inline four as well as a five speed manual transmission. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this Previa has a five speed manual in it. It is also all wheel drive, so we are in for quite the treat today. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers as well as other merch when it becomes available. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. You get a video of your car just like this one, and you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 2.4 liter inline four. And like I said, it is under me, meaning this is a mid-engined minivan. That's kind of what the Previa was known for back in the 90s is that it's actually a mid-engined van. Now the 2.4 liter makes about 138 horsepower. It's not that special or quick. However, in later model years, they did offer a supercharged version. However, it still didn't make that much more horsepower. And, and actually this mid-engine setup kind of was the death of the Previa. And we'll talk about that towards the end. But like I said, paired to it, five speed manual transmission. Now something the supercharged version never got was the manual because they discontinued this transmission before they started doing the supercharge. There wasn't any overlap, unfortunately. But I am finally driving a manual Previa. What do I think? Well, it has a really long throw. Clutch is nice and light. The clutch throw is nice and light. It's very, very Toyota getting it in and out of gear. It's more Toyota truck than like Corolla. It's just very strange to be driving a minivan with a stick shift here in America. Even at the minivan's peak, a stick shift was still rare. And so it's very, very interesting to be driving this. But last but not least about the drivetrain, like I mentioned at the top of the video, this is all wheel drive. So you can get the Previa in rear wheel drive and manual or in all wheel drive and manual, the all wheel drives being more rare, which is why I jumped on this car to review. And it actually does get a different manual transmission than the rear wheel drive. So adding to that rarity, this also gets a transfer case that's pretty beefy actually. And it is a solid all wheel drive system. Now there are no high low ranges or anything like that, but I'm just basking in the glory that is an all wheel drive manual transmission to minivan. I think that is the coolest thing in the world. With that being said, let's talk about the interior. We have a couple interesting bits in here. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges. On the left is my coolant temperature, then I have my speedometer, and on the right I have my tachometer and fuel. The reason I emphasize tachometer is because that was special for the manual transmission previous. They got tachometers where the standard one, as you're seeing here, did not get a tachometer, so it just had a bigger, oddly shaped speedometer. Kind of unique for this particular van. The steering wheel doesn't have any buttons on the front. I do have cruise control around the back and of course a big pillowy airbag here for 1991. And off to the left, I do have my gauge dimmer switch and an auxiliary switch that the owner put in for a secondary battery. If you'll notice this particular one has aftermarket installed solar panels on the roof. And so the switch controls that. I do have this odd shaped vent off to the left as well. And on the door, I have crank windows, my lock and unlock. However, one interesting thing over here is that the handbrake is actually between the seat and the door. This is very, very weird placement, which I noticed in the automatic Previa that I did. However, that didn't really matter because you don't really use the handbrake in an automatic, but this, it's a very weird position to put the handbrake in. Don't understand why Toyota did that. Moving into the center, I do have my climate controls as well as vents around the side. The AC is working today and I do have rear heat control up at the top. Fan speed, where to send it, all the goodies. And then I do have an aftermarket radio because most radios from the 90s have either broken or just were garbage to start off with. Then I do have pop-out cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Toyota Previa all-wheel drive. And unfortunately, as you can probably tell if you have eyeballs in your head, it will not fit the big friggin' bottle. That's okay, I didn't fully expect it to. Not the end of the world, but it is what it is. <laughs> Then I do have a 12 volt outlet that'd be used as a cigarette lighter and I have an ashtray. And then I get a little cubby down on the ground and then we move to the shifter. The shift knob is the same shift knob you would find in all other Toyota products of this era, which I love, I've come to know and love it. Pretty great there. However, as you'll notice, the throw is very, very tall because the shifter is so low to the ground. So it does add to that van slash truck feeling. This really feels more like a truck 
driving than a sedan. Just some food for thought. Now we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are finished in this very 90s Toyota cloth. I love the look and feel of them. The blue interior as well is just so iconically, iconically 90s. I love it a lot and it's decently comfortable and under the driver's seat is where you would find the, I guess, technical hood where the engine is. The engine is directly below me. However, speaking of seats, we don't have any back seats but we will hop around back and talk about the space. All right, so coming into the back of the Previa, now this one, that's my filming equipment, this one also does not have back seats. I say also because the first Previa I ever reviewed did not have back seats either. So this one has actually been used as a cross country camper. So tons of space back here. Normally it would be three rows of seating. However, I wouldn't really recommend it because this got such a poor crash test rating that the back seats were not that safe. However, something I do want to point out is that up above, I do have my own climate controls. I can do off, low and high. It has the nice Toyota logo there and it spreads from side to side. Just like the first gen Honda Odyssey slash Isuzu Oasis that I reviewed earlier this year so very cool to see that but this is the back space of a Toyota Previa when there are no back seats one day when I hope to actually review a supercharged one hopefully that one would have back seats so if you have a supercharged Previa that you would let me review that has back seats definitely let me know with the contact info up on the screen now we got to talk about the looks and this van looks strange I don't think it takes a mathematician to figure that out it's very egg shaped it's very rounded almost kind of looks like a spaceship, which I think is really, really cool. And that's also emphasized in the interior, but we're talking about the exterior. Like I said, there are aftermarket solar panels up on the roof, which is definitely very unique to this vehicle. And overall, I love the look of the Previa just because I think it is so unique. And anytime I see one in traffic, I always wonder if it's manual or I wonder if it's supercharged. Or I wonder if it's all wheel drive. And this one is at least two of those three. But now let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think finally driving a manual Toyota Previa. Well, my driving thoughts are as follows. This is incredibly cool, incredibly unique. It's not like this crazy, awesome driving experience. I'm not like, wow, this shifter is amazing. This clutch is fantastic. They're all good. But that feeling does come across when you realize that you're driving something so special, so unique and different, and something that we quite frankly won't ever see again not only manual transmission and all wheel drive, but in a minivan, minivans themselves are going away. It's hard to find many manufacturers that still make minivans besides Honda, Toyota, and Kia, let alone all wheel drive and manual. This is just such a little unicorn. I love it. In terms of shooting cars hall of fame, this has to be one of the weirder, more unique ones. But I do want to talk about the Previa as a whole. What happened to this thing? Well, like I said, that mid-engine design kind of doomed this car. Because at the time, people often forget that Chrysler was so dominant when it came to the minivan game. They ruled the world. They owned all the properties in minivan Monopoly. And they had hotels on each of them. The town and country and Dodge Caravan were unstoppable. And so one of the big advantages of the Chrysler vans was the fact that you could get them with a V6, made a lot more power and was torquier than an inline four. Well, Toyota thought, hey, let's put a V6 into our vans, except they couldn't because it's mid engine and you can't fit a V6 under the driver and passenger. So Toyota tried to remedy this by offering the supercharged version. And yeah, it made more power, but it didn't have the wafty torquiness that people came to know and love from the Chrysler van. It couldn't compete. And so Toyota ended up completely redesigning the Previa, giving it that V6, making it front wheel drive and switching its name to the Sienna. I would love to track down a first generation Sienna. I still have never driven one, but I've driven Sienna since. And the V6s are fantastic. And for my money, the Sienna is one of the best minivans you could buy today. But the Previa platform was just too limiting to do that. And so unfortunately, they sacrificed the quirkiness and weirdness for sales eventually and so while yes the modern Siennas are good vans they're fantastic they're just not as special as this one was this is such a special van something that we'll probably never see again in modern vehicles a manual all-wheel drive minivan it doesn't get much cooler than that 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Steve for letting me take out his manual all-wheel drive Previa. This is such a unicorn of a car. I'm very appreciative of him. I'm filming a couple of his vehicles today, which is so, so cool. You'll see them on the channel soon, if not already. He's absolutely awesome, and I can't thank Steve enough. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. Oh,